Patient. I so I I I thought well you know maybe we should open the can up a little bit and talk to some people who aren't members of SBM and see what they think uh, the opportunities are to make health and healthcare better. So I think you and I I, I think you and I are kind of on the action end of things. We're more oriented toward that. Um, for I don't know. If oh, well, I'm building a uh, healthcare organization here in Australia. Right. Exactly. And not for profit. Yeah. So, so since since we we just seem to be oriented that way, more toward doing something rather than just talking about it. So, and I know your motivation, and I know you've been doing it for a while, and you're making. Um, quite a bit of progress so some people some people think that that's right I, I don't but <laughs> that's because I've probably got too high a standards but um, people tell me we've done very well in our first year or so yeah so so considering the idea that you're I don't I don't know how many people are, are members at this point I know I've seen the numbers in your in your presentations and in, in the newsletter, but oh yeah, okay. But um, it's we've got about three hundred and fifty members. Three hundred and fifty. Yeah, right now, uh, well behind schedule, but that's roughly what we're at. So where did you want to be? Five thousand. At this stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at this stage. Yeah, it's for looking back on it, it was probably wildly ambitious, but. It's, uh, uh, so we we're, we're trying for five thousand next this time next year. Now, are you charging a membership fee or not? No, it's free. Okay. And you're going to, uh, as I understand it, you're going to be doing um, some crowdfunding. We've completed that already. So how did that go? It went reasonably well. Um, we had a target of twenty thousand dollars and we got ten in a bit. Well that's pretty good. Don't you think? How much time? Um six weeks I think. Okay. So you set a deadline and and that was specifically for um working on your website as I recall? The uh the the money raised will be spent um on developing our website, which we've already taken steps to do. Um on membership recruitment and general administration. So you, no, are you? No, hey, no one gets paid in Dragon Claw, including including myself. So you're not paying anyone to do any work. All the work is voluntary. At this stage, I've been quite successful, and in fact, um, our um, the current website, which is version one, is is not what I wanted, and it's not what reflects the ideals of Dragon Claw. Uh, and we've now started work through a volunteer group on version two, and that should be beta test ready by March and launched by May next year, and it will be four times the size of our current website and have many more features. Okay, so are you going to have interactive features and things of, like that so that you can do more uh, for your members on on the website itself, is that what the plan is? Right. So the the basis behind Dragon Core is to fill the gap uh, between um, uh, clinical care for chronic patients with three disease types and the rest of the year where they don't get any care uh, of any sort. So it's about self help and care coordination. Okay. We've noticed that, that across most countries. For people with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and JIA, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, that uh, we all fall through the cracks, and um, and you spend about between two and four days in total hours um, in front of a clinician. Uh, but over the rest of the year, what do you do to look after yourself? And so there's a whole series of things to do with non-clinical interventions such as meditation, exercise, diet, um, uh, 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 medication management, da 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 there's a whole series. So 
um, we want to fill that gap because so many people with severe chronic diseases are left floating and uh, or fall through the gaps and the impact on the health system when crisis comes is quite severe impact on their families and we've also included uh, the carer in our organization um, and version 2 will have a whole thing called carer central in it for example um, because who cares for the carer um, and the the, the other the other two features is others uh, that we're going to have we're going to try and mold uh, the progression of the disease which really goes in three fat ways that is crisis up to about 18 months um, uh, uh, management another 18 months and then establishment going forward and then people can revert back to crisis as these three sort of waves and then there's a the development of chronic uh, comorbidities associated with um, the disease so people and we think we're the first website on the globe at this stage to actually try and build uh, algorithms that provide for those two factors as they go forward over time and provide people with a a, uh, a customized view of the things they may need uh, we, we will do that from what we call the commons but the um, in essence version one was just getting a presence up version two is about collaboration version three now is going to be about the introduction of telehealth um, and version four if we get that far um, will have uh, some artificial intelligence built in there so if we've thought through the, the broad designs at this stage and we've built and we've designed version two reasonably carefully you know from an amateur point of view at this stage okay so, so will, will you need uh, you anticipate needing any help from outside organizations for this how are you going to how will you pay for this? Or is it all going to be voluntary work? Uh, some, of, some of it sounds like it would be pretty tech heavy and potentially very expensive. Right. So um, um, so what we've done, we have a volunteer work group of about 28 people. And then we have five commercial organizations who support Dragon Claw in kind up to quite a lot of money actually they spend quite a bit of money with us in the vicinity of hundred and fifty thousand dollars and um, and um, um, the um, and it's those commercial groups that are building version two of the Dragon Claw led by a volunteer a new volunteer who happens to be tech very tech savvy um, and um, so our we don't see many costs in the actual build. Uh, there will be certainly significant costs in the maintenance of it. Um, and uh, right now we're busily trying to dig up a commercial cash sponsorship, um, which um, so far we've been unsuccessful in doing. Now, what uh, you, so you anticipate, so uh, your membership is primarily rheumatoid, arthritis patients I presume and lupus and JIA only and their carers and interested clinicians yeah okay and um, you will offer that the fundamental principle is that you will help people to provide care help people to learn how to care for themselves and help care for the caregivers Okay, let me, let me give you, I need to give you a quick example here because I think you're taking care in a clinical sense, is that right? I am not, I'm not sure, this is what I'm getting at, I'm not sure. Okay, alright, let me, let me give you some examples. I, 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 the reason I'm doing this is that I have severe rheumatoid arthritis and I'm on a biologic drug and I can't walk without it. But um, my journey through the Australian healthcare system and Dragon Claw is a global uh, site is was very difficult and very piecemeal and very fragmented what a good example is this um, um, drug to drug interaction when you're on 15 drugs no one really explains how that works and there are websites that do that right. two um, how to read a pathology report there are websites that do that but no one knows there exist um, secondly um, 
um, I started to, because I couldn't move much, get muscle wastage. And uh, my clinicians, who are, I'm you know, very happy with, didn't see themselves getting outside their box of activity, their blood, blood counts, etc. So when I said, I need to get some help here, because I think I'm losing muscle mass, they agreed I was losing muscle mass, but for fumbling around, didn't know who to go to. I had to find a very specialized clinic that was run by a group of physiologists, not physiotherapists, physiologists. And they were wonderful. They made enormous difference. Now, that sort of information should have been available. Uh, those three types of information I just gave you should have been available. So we're going to bring together all that sort of material. Not in a, a reading static way, but through videos. So if you go on Dragon Claw now and go to our video, video library, you will see there's one there on physio, physiology right. and what they do. Right, and um, um, so that's a model type of thing that we want to do. Because there are so many factors with these sorts of chronic diseases outside of the blood chemistry that need to be addressed in a holistic, integrated manner that is not being addressed. Right. And mental health is another example. And, um, you know, we've, and the level of anxiety involved in these conditions is high. On Dragon Claw 1, we do have a mental health module that is recognized and works. That, that will be expanded for version 2. So I guess the, the, the thing is, you know, we want to move away from the idea of blogs and static pages to where people, members communicate. So one of the ideas we have is self-knowledge. So we want to promote the idea that you need to observe yourself and assess yourself outside of clinical areas, so we're not trying to disturb the primary clinical relationship, that we are not trying to disturb that, that's very important. Um, and, um, and so version one has a primitive area that's called uh, my research, so where we're trying to capture people's knowledge about, they've gone through the system and the condition, what do they know about rashes, for example, that occur on the feet, or thinning of the skin, you know, due to prendazine. You know, or how do you, how do you get a taper off prednisone, for example? Um, you know, and, and what happens if you go too fast? What to look out for? Um, so the, there's a whole series of issues like that that uh, we want to get onto. And then also to break down loneliness and isolation. So we're going to build some collaborative tools there, from simple SMS to video conferencing like this. Um, and so member to member can communicate. Yeah. We're not actually trying to bring a clinician into the conversation. Later on, in the telehealth mode, we may do that. And that may be a slightly different operation. But um, at this stage, there's a group of clinicians have been advising us, interestingly enough, and been quite helpful. Okay. So, um, now, you, you and I talked about um, and tried to connect with Google Hangouts. Um, do you see that as a part of your, your, it sounds like you're developing a classroom and um, I think that's pretty important for um, uh, the kind of work you're trying to do. Um, I have, have tried it a little bit for teaching. I wonder what you are doing now and what tools you use for video classroom or virtual classrooms? Have you used okay, any? so uh, the concept of a classroom is that there's someone up front talking to people sitting down, I guess. We, we, while we may run, we will run uh, webinars by both patients and by clinicians, we're very keen to maintain a patient-centric view of Dragon Claw, not a clinician-centric view. Um, so we're going to use uh, WebRTC as the probably the main technical back platform for for video conferencing um, because that's pretty native to most of the the browser windows right now. It's not uh, fully compatible with Safari, but it will be later on, we think. And if it's not, we will stick stick put in Skype as well. The reason for that is that most people around the world, to our understanding, are familiar with 
as we are familiar with Skype. Um, uh, Hangouts uh, and the other, uh, um, and there's a number of other ones that I've used are rarer, and, and not everyone has an account with uh, Google, for example. How many people can you get into a conversation on Skype? If you go, in my memory, if it's right, if you go to Skype Pro, which is the next level up, um, you can get um, something like 40 people, if you want to, uh, on board, which is good enough for a start for us anyway. Like, like a conference room, basically. Yeah, you can do a video seminar, a seminar that way. Okay. Or, or group chat. So you can do a group chat and the, and the person talking comes up. Uh, yeah, up in the video and then comes back down again off screen. You know. Right. Well, that, that's that seems pretty good to me. Um, uh, one of the problems with uh, telemedicine in the U.S. is HIPAA compliance. I, I don't know if there's, there's security and that kind of an issue uh, with the with the work you're doing since it's simply patient I don't know it seems to me to be important for it to be secure so yeah absolutely we are we will be and I think we are right now HIPAA compliant already um, um, uh, um, we will we won't be going down the HL7 route um, but just on data security of patient information because we actually do collect quite a lot of patient information and we plan to collect more for a variety of reasons um, that will be held um, separately and under lock and key in a, another data vault, etc. So we are we are taking plans and we are compliant with the Australian government, um, I believe, uh, rules on this at this stage. I, I but we're not I am, we're not we're not constructing a medical record, Mike. Okay, so so there is no medical record type information. People are asked uh, quite a bit about their condition, so we can plot them on these curves, whether they're in crisis, etc., etc. Um, but uh, um, we don't ask for blood information, and that's what, I, and it's voluntary for them to put in their drug data. But uh, there's no diagnostic information there. Okay. okay. And this is the current uh, current events. There's no no patient. Are there patient identifiers? How do you how yep. do you um, do you de-identify patients in your databases, or how do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah. So the um, clearly we have to have patient identified data to you for the patient to use the system, so that we can plot these curves and these you know chronic disease points, etc. And that's all identified in the terms and conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, the, the, uh, uh, as, as, uh, when data is not ne needed, it will be de-identified, just stored as a flat file somewhere in the secure data center. Um, you know, we've not thought through how we will use other data. We're not keen on the idea of selling it, um, you know, de-identified data at all. But we may write a series of papers, you know, based on what patients think about X, Y, and Z from Dragon Call. Yeah, well, it makes sense. You want to be able to do research. You want to be able to do quality performance improvement, which is all um, can be done with de-identified patient data as long as you have a good database. Um, and is that gonna is that data on the web? How is it set up now? It's well, um, version one is it's it's all on the same platform. Uh, and it's run by, uh, uh, um, it's housed uh, on, a, I think it's GoDaddy platform, but the data itself is, is held separately. Um, and version 2 will be more secure again, um, but uh, where the actual platform will be separated from the data storage. Do you have your own servers? No, we're not that, we don't have enough money for that, we don't have any money for that. I mean, we're all volunteers, so, you know, if someone says they're going to do something and they only do half a job, it's, it's one of the frustrations, you know, we can't do much else. We just have to go with what's there. Yeah, that's the way it seems to be, right? Um, yeah. Vol volunteers 
uh, it's kind of hard to make volunteers do something that they really don't have the time to do. So yeah, no, that's we've set up structures now where volunteers are allocated for two particular structures, yeah. uh, organization structures, and that's starting to work actually. But yeah, but volunteers are volunteers. People you know, have got to feed their family, etc. Unfortunately, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you? How do you think uh, society? for participatory medicine can participate in projects like this? How do you think it, it can Well, the, uh, the goals and objectives of participatory medicine are not dissimilar, quite complementary to what we're trying to do in Dragon Corps. Uh, that's why I joined, you know, and also because I know Danny Sands. But um, the, uh, so I, I see a compatibility here. Um, and I was hoping that the society would have been more advanced in both its activities and website than it is now so that makes there would be some way of um, you know providing joint membership or or sharing some useful service um, or just exposing each other's website you know but at, at this point in time there's I can't see a way of doing an effective interlinking that, that generates a service or an idea or information for both members of both groups, given that ours are effectively people who are seriously ill right. looking for support, right? And yours are a slightly different group, so we need to be a bit careful about that. But, um, um, but uh, um, you know, I'm uh, quite open to cooperation of one form or another. You know, so within the confines of we're flat out here trying to build Dragon Claw version 2 and build the organisation. So where there's compatibility and usefulness, let's hook up and do something, where there's not, I'm happy to observe each other. Um, there's nothing secret about Janko, I mean, we're very open, uh, happy to answer anyone's questions, but we are trying to build a global website. So I'll just tell you a little story. Um, uh, roughly 20%, 25% of our members come from North America, um, and um, and right now, Drain Claw is hard to find on the website. Our, our Google tags, etc., are a mess, and I've got to get that addressed one way or another. But the but uh, uh, we want to grow it in English-speaking countries, including India, you know, South Africa, and the and the other group of members interesting overseas is um, is Russia. Um, and um, so, how do these people find out about Drain Claw? I'm not certain, but one of the things I have been doing is is I'm a member of a lot of blogs and stuff around the world, and I do mention Dragon Claw on those blogs, and that seems to be quite an effective way of introducing Dragon Claw. But um, you know, uh, uh, you guys need members. Um, I need members, so obviously maybe there's some way of doing something mutually useful there. I think that's a good idea, that the idea of uh, mutual um, membership options, well, you join, join one organization and you're a member of the others, uh, putting information up on, uh, on the websites that show the relationship, but I, I think those things need to be formalized, don't you? Well, um where, to an extent where they need to. So let me put it this way. You guys, as I understand it, are cash poor and volunteers, like us. We're cash poor and volunteers. We don't have the resources to do fancy contracts and have legals. And if something goes wrong, there's virtually um, my head's on the line and I guess my fellow director head's on the line and no one else is. Um, you know, and, um, and the intention is good. I'm very careful where I can be. I, I, I really can't see how we can do other than the exchange of emails and a, a letter. You know, if you're talking about contracts with, with legals, then I'll probably step back because it's, we can't afford it. Well, I'm, you know, honestly, I don't know what it requires, but it seems to me that they should be um, partnerships or some kind of um, definitive relationship rather than well, what we do right now is we talk to each other and that's great and we cooperate so how can we cooperate we can look at the ways we can cooperate and that's 
also good. But if we want the organizations to cooperate on an organizational level, it seems like that's another level of um, mutual support. And it makes well, sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. I mean, for example, if you and I developed up a proposal of working together which had practical steps in it, then I would take that to our directors meeting, which I'm one of the directors. If that gets signed off, then that's then all we then my view is then we would if there's no costs involved, well not much, then we would simply exchange emails and say, This is the what we're gonna try and do, this is our intention and you know, um, and the action steps are this, this, and this. End of story. And if one party gets a dispute or doesn't like it, they simply turn around and walk away. So I have an idea. Why don't you and I propose um, something of a relationship to SPM that would relate Dragon Claw, Veritas Self Care, and SPM? Let's let's think about way uh, ways that we can actually come up with a uh, shared project that would benefit all three organizations and groups of people. So yeah, I mean we haven't talked about Veritas, Mike, and yeah, I wasn't I was going to raise that at the end, but now that you've brought it up, where are we with that? <laughs> uh, exa exactly. Um, I think in the same place that we've been, we were when we started, and um, I'm still uh, on that uh, front. I'm still building the membership, the community, and trying to work uh, specific projects and to spread the information. So uh, I, I think that. It's all a matter of the members. You know, the members have the can can do what they'd like to do, and I think this the projects have to come from the membership. I can I can give you some examples, uh, and we usually post a summary at the end of the year, and that's part of what I have to do. But since I'm doing a lot of the work myself, and uh, and and getting hijacked to do work for SPM. Uh, <laughs> I know what it feels like. Uh, exactly. So this is where I think maybe if we start talking to each other more and and actually talking about how we can support each other's work and do some things to avoid duplication. Um, I think that uh, maybe that would in improve efficiencies and things like that. Um, one of my high priority items is based because of my career, the way I've spent most of my time is I focus on preventing death and preventing morbidity and mortality. Well, that's part of what you're trying to do is preventing progressive disease and uh, help people to do it on their own, and and I think that health and healthcare literacy is the fundamental um, principle involved there, and 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 it, and it cuts across the board and the spectrum of health and disease. So I think we should be cooperating on health and healthcare literacy. I I think we should make a proposal uh, to SBM, and we should say exactly what we'd like to, to happen and I, I know I have my own ideas but I don't like to impose them on other people so i rather see us get the right people in the same room and then just start start working on it well happy to happy to keep on talking about whatever project we might define yeah, and, I, and I see that as a one step at a time deal. I don't think there are any shortcuts, and I don't, I don't pretend to have the answers. But I know we have a lot of interesting people who are uh, who care about this stuff, and I think they they'd like to see some motion. And I focus usually on individuals first, 
I try to help one person at a time and then I think about how that can be translated into a larger um, global even platform that will help other people. So, Michael, how many people are in SPM? The number I think is about 300, I'm not sure. Okay, similar size. Okay. And, and how many volunteers in SPM? I believe them, every, everybody's a volunteer. What, all 300? Well, how much are they doing? No, uh, that is another question. I don't know the answer. How many people are actually working on projects inside SPM? I don't know. Okay, so when I said 28 in Dragon Core, that's the number of volunteers who are working in Dragon Core, trying to build the organization. Right, so you are, these are active uh, project um, assets. Yeah. assets. Okay. And that's, that's a lot. I think that out of 310 percent, that's pretty impressive. And well, the interesting thing is that, that we only have four um, patients, if you like, uh, eligible members of Dragon Claw. The rest are not eligible at all. <laughs> they just want to help. Well, that's good. I mean, that's a, that's an opportunity. I think the way I see it is an opportunity for cross-fertilization in an open organization and for opening up the thinking in other organizations. I mean, you have done a lot of uh, work in considering the number of people and, and you're limiting your focus and, um, and that's all probably part of why it's successful. We haven't done that yet. We haven't narrowed that down. I don't think it's narrowed down for SPM, and it hasn't been narrowed down for Veritas Healthcare. So, uh, specific projects need specific infrastructure, and that's that's obviously what you're doing. And you're ahead of us in a lot of things. So. Now, yeah, I spend 20 hours a week, at least, on Dragon Core. Now, what would Dragon what happened to Dragon Claw if you weren't there? That's an interesting question. We've, some people have been discussing that actually quite uh, already. Um, uh, there are two directors, one, me, myself, as one. Um, we're thinking of uh, appointing a third director uh, because Dragon Claw is not a charity. Dragon Claw is a not-for-profit company. Right. Right? There's it, 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 uh, a slight difference. And, um, um, and um, I guess the, the uh, and we're also thinking of splitting the company into two, uh, a commercial arm and a not-for-profit arm, uh, in which case there will be a different uh, directorship on the commercial arm, which I don't want to be part of. Um, but um, um, if something happened to me, I suspect at this point in time things would go very slowly. But... Um, We've just established a, a, a PAC, a patient advisory committee, and the idea behind that is that the patients will actually take over the running, the legal and controlling running of Dragon Claw, because philosophically it has to be a patient-driven organisation. So when I get them trained up and ready, I intend to step back a bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's, that's uh, sensible. But I think it, it also sounds like you put a lot of energy into it, and, and that's, I think that's the nature of all um, of, of these small organizations that are trying to yeah. um, make something happen. So I think, again, that's another opportunity for cooperation that maybe uh, take the weight off some people and spread it around. I, I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know exactly what should happen, but I believe that, that these are opportunities for us to explore. So those are just yeah. my thoughts. And um, so they're, when they want us to interview people, they're thinking about two questions. They want to know uh, what SPM can do for you and what you can do for SPM. So those are the two questions they like answered. And 
You know, I like conversations. I think it works better myself. And uh, I think we know what you're doing. And um, it's, it's ahead of what a lot of other people are doing. And it's very sensible. So I see as you can, as you can share you, what you're doing, that is beneficial to everyone. And I'm happy to share, not a problem at all. Um, you know, um, I guess the one thing I'd love to see from SPM is that the email threads are cleaned up. You know, we go theme-based, so I'm not getting 50 emails a day at this end, and um, or most of which are irrelevant to the health life in this, in this part of the world. Um, and there's some gems there, but I don't have time to read 50 of them. I end up pressing the delete button most of the time. I'd rather subscribe to one or two themes and, uh, and see how they go. Um, now, and is, do you know how that can be done? And is, is there a simple way that that can be done that we can uh, share with SPM? Because there seems to be a reluctance. I don't think there's a reluctance to do it. There seems to be a lack of knowledge as to how that can be done, maybe. I'm not sure. There's a, a site that you probably know called Patients Like Me. Right. Right, dot com. They run a blog, a theme-based blog. And we do a theme-based blog, too, in, in, in version one of Dragon Claw. Um, and it's basically, you know, you go on the whole blog's there, all the themes, and you just click on the particular theme that you are interested in or want to comment on. And, uh, but you're not sent, um, you can be sent a reminder email that there's a, a new entry into that particular theme, but you're not deluged with email saying, you know, here are all the themes and here are all the content. We, I, for one, don't want that. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. So if we look at your website, um, what's the best way to do that? Did you... Um you probably already shared all this information with the folks at SPM, but it might be good for us to do that again. So that yeah, look, that's right. Michael, you're a doctor, aren't you? Right. You're a medical doctor, aren't you? Right, yes. Great. So that makes you eligible to join Dragon Claw as an interested medical person. All right. So um, you haven't already joined? I thought you had. I think I, I uh, have joined. I think I'm a member. I do get the yeah. newsletter. Yeah, you get the newsletter. Look, um, if you can remember your ID and your login, um, um, have a go. If you can't, send me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll send you um, a more generic way of getting in, um, which you can then use yourself rather than share it around, please, uh, to have a look. Um, but... Um, um, but, uh, um, uh, so try, have you forgotten your ID, etc.? Oh, I, I'm sure I can figure that out. Okay, fine. Uh, but the main thing is to make sure that the other SPM members I have will figure out a way to get in, to take a look, and maybe... Join. Well, the other thing, Michael, is just simply take screenshots um, and stick them on a, uh, on a PowerPoint and then circulate that to, to, to some of your executives. Um, if they want to do that, as well, you know, then they just see the image. And as I said, patients like me is much more advanced. They have a much more sophisticated system. Yeah, okay. we've got a primitive one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I will share this uh, recording with the folks that are that are going to do the editing, and um, what they'll want is contact information for you so that they can share that with the rest of the group. So what's the best uh, email to use to contact you if they would like that? Uh, they want to contact me privately. It's, it's uh, M-I-G-I-L-L 88, that's the number 88, at me.com. Pretty straightforward, M-I-G-I-L-88 at me.com. Now, I just end the recording, Mike, if I could, on, on the issue of value proposition, which is something that we are struggling with in Dragon Claw, and we don't charge a fee. Right. You guys, SPM, charge a fee, and on the surface of it, I cannot justify paying whatever I pay, 50 bucks or whatever it is. I don't get 50 bucks worth of value back. That's being hard-nosed and commercial. 
and I don't charge a fee, or we don't charge a fee in Dragon Claw for our members, and I still don't think we deliver enough value to justify their membership. Right, nice. right. So, so I think um, um, you know, I, um, I threatened earlier on this year to terminate my membership, and I relented after talking to Danny, and I rejoined. But you know, I'd have to say that it, it's it's questionable. Uh, what does a member get for their 50 bucks? And um, and the fact that there's a stream of emails and there's a static website is neither innovative nor particularly useful at this point in time. For me, I'm talking privately. Now, I don't mean to be critical, but I'm simply saying that we both of us as running volunteer-based organizations have to provide value not only to the volunteers, but also to the membership. Right. And, and uh, I hear you. That's, <laughs> I, I struggled with whether or not to renew my membership as well. And uh, I think that if we can't uh, uh, create value, then um, it's hard to answer the question. So. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. And... Um, um, you know, I think I, I'm very interested in what SPM is doing, and I'm interested to follow what's going on. Um, but um, you know, I think SPM needs to get its act together and, and start moving. I don't see much evolutionary change in the two years that I've or so that I've been involved. It's hard to have a movement if you have no motion. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> And um, I, I can only share this with everybody else and hope that they find it, find it valuable. And I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. And I will, um, I have to put the time in to study your uh, blogs and the way you've set it up. Study the whole website if you like. Yeah. Uh, and remember, it's primitive. It's not what we want. Version two will be far more sophisticated, we think, and hope. <laughs> no, I think that's great, and and I, I'm I'm going to learn from you. There's no question about it. So, uh, I don't have much technical skill. I'm just kind of learning as I do it. So, uh, I can take care of patients just fine, but the uh, taking care of websites, that's not so easy for me. But yeah, yeah, well, you, you've got to have a vision about what you want the website to do, that's true. So we'll, we'll, we will uh, we'll continue our conversations and uh, take it one step at a time. And as you, I think cooperation is the only path to fixing these problems long term on a global scale. So. I think those of us who know that um, just need to stick with it and we'll, we'll figure it out. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the other thing you guys, like we need to be, is very conscious of the demographic, Mike. Um, we have a very long tail of sufferers going down to the age of two right, right. and then a, and a big lump of after about 45 of, of people. But if you add the tail up, they're almost the same size of the two groups, but everyone ignores the tail, and they're younger, and it's very hard to get them involved on the internet. And we're actually taking specific design steps to attract younger members into Dragon Claw, and version 2 will demonstrate some of that. I think that's great. I think that's important. Uh, the full spectrum uh, opportunities are massive, and... Uh, but there's a, still just a small percentage of the population that's motivated to participate. So you're experiencing that with a specific disease that hurts like hell and makes some people virtually crippled. And imagine if they're healthy to start with, trying to get them motivated to participate. It's challenging. It's, it's uh, remarkably challenging. So... We just have to keep trying and try uh, finding different ways to get folks engaged in what they need to have better health and health care. And, and I, I don't see 
any alternative but to keep trying. So. Mike, if you and your partner get as far as Sydney, you must come and have dinner with us and plus even stay. So um, uh, it's a long way from you. <laughs> so it's, it's easy for me to make the offer, but it's a genuine one. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, we'll be in touch plenty before that. And, okay. And the same goes with, uh, with visits to the U.S. So. We will see if I get that far. Okay. All right. Well, keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Thanks. You too. Take care. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.